And welcome to Wednesday Night Bible Study here at Faith and Victory Church. Sorry we're a little late. We had a few tech problems here tonight, which uh, randomly show up with um, Facebook streaming, and sometimes you just never know when they're going to show up. And um, But we're past them, and we're here. Uh, one quick note, you may hear the um, overwhelmingly um, distinct sound of a hound dog uh, um, in the background upon occasion. It's raining outside, and our... Um, our big buddy can't go out, and he's eating and guarding his food. So if that happens, understand it was just something we would not normally have. He would have him outside, but um, he can't be outside right now. Sorry. All right. So if Blue goes after it, you understand he's chasing something. Praise the Lord. All righty. Welcome, and we're glad to have you. want to uh, go ahead and give you a heads up. Uh, starting two weeks, two weeks. Everybody say two weeks. Two weeks from tonight, we'll begin the uh, Wednesday night series, The Bible in the Light of Our Redemption. And we'll be using as our text, um, the base text, and for the questions and answers, a book by E.W. Kenyon by the same title, The Bible in the Light of Our Redemption. If you're out there and you haven't gotten this book and you want to join us, uh, you can acquire it from Amazon or Walmart.com. Uh, a price about thirteen forty eight of copy. Uh, you can go to used books and get it for about uh, the a used version for about eight seven eight dollars maybe nine um, for the used version. But um, it's out there. We will be using that for our text, um, and so um, we're looking forward to that. Just want to go ahead and get you out there and let you know when that date is going to be. So August twenty fifth, we begin that Bible study. I, about eighteen twenty lessons, I think. Um, and we'll be going through that's going to take us 18, 20 weeks to go through and, um, it'll be a good time. All right. Praise the Lord. Let's get into tonight. Um, you know, last week we were talking about the, the, uh, the church of acts and tonight I want, I want to talk about the church and her mission church and her mission reading from acts chapter two verses 42 through 45. Uh, it says, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and fellowship and breaking of bread and in prayers and that fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles and of that um, and all that believed were together and all things common and sold their possessions and good and parted them to all men as every man had need praise the Lord Glory to God. So we want to talk about that, you know, initially the church was established in New Testament thought along the lines of um, staying in the apostles' doctrine, in fellowship, breaking bread, and prayer, um, and taking care of one another's needs with the calling of go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Amen. <clears throat> so the things that the church does to make uh, believers healthy, strong, the local and corporate body of Christ strong are done in order to position us to evangelize uh, the gospel. Praise the Lord. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. So let's look uh, first off. At the mission of the church, number one, is evangeliz evangelization. Evangelization. There we go. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 28. I think I really mutilated that word. Evangelization. evangelization. Thank you, thank you. you know, I, I knew I mutilated it. I couldn't quite. Once, once, sometimes once you mutilate it, there's no fixing it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, I know one preacher used to um, say the word obstacle or obstacle, Stackle. obstacle. Hallelujah. And once that was said, you couldn't ever get it right in your head. <laughs> Hallelujah. <coughs> Praise God. Um, Matthew chapter 28, verse 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power, now we know this word, uh, power is, uh, is exousia in the Greek, meaning authority. So better translated, all authority is given unto me in heaven and in earth. 
And go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. And also looking over into Mark's gospel in the 16th chapter. Where Mark writes, and starting in verse 15, uh, and he said unto them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. <clears throat> and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. That's Je this is Jesus talking. So Jesus says, In my name they shall cast out devils or Variant translations say it this way, exercise authority over demons. Hallelujah. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then 2 Timothy chapter 4, 2 Timothy chapter 4, and in verse 5, it says, Paul writing to his young protege Timothy, but watch thou unto all things, endure affliction, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist make full proof of thy ministry hallelujah so here we have evangelizing is the mission of the church to go forth with the good news of jesus <clears throat> sharing how god loves humanity the plan of reconciliation and restoration he has for their life to deliver them from the powers of darkness and to translate them into the kingdom of his dear son. The church's mission of evangelization is to be foremost its, its calling and purpose. The foremost calling and purpose of the church is not to get together and be cool or have a great time. We're going to cover some of these things in a minute. But the purpose of the church. See, if the, minutes, if, if the purpose of the church was for us just to be happy, full of joy, healed, and prosperous, and whatever, we just may as well get saved to go to heaven immediately. Our, our, our mission is to win the lost. That's our calling. That's, our, that's what we're here for, is to go bring people into the kingdom of God. Somebody say amen. amen. The other things about the church are to make us effective for evangelism, to make us healthy. You know, it's, it's hard uh, for unhealthy Christians to be good evangelists, as it were. And when I mean unhealthy, unhealthy spiritually, unhealthy emotionally, unhealthy physically. And so there's a lot of, there's a lot of aspects of the work of the local church to make you healthy so you can do your job. Amen. Look real quickly, if you will, over to the fourth chapter of um, the book of Ephesians. The fourth chapter of the book of Ephesians. The Apostle Paul writing says in verse 7, But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. Wherefore he saith, when he ascended up on high, he led captivity captive 
and gave gifts unto men. Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also first descended into the lower parts of the earth? He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens that he might fill all things. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for. So the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, the pastor, teacher were given for a purpose. And he says here, for the perfecting of the saints. Now, King James' use of the word perfecting is a little, um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, obscure to us, or not really obscure, but maybe misleading. Because of our, our understanding or our use of the word perfect uh, in modern vernacular lends mainly to the idea of faultless, of perfection, faultless, no, not, everything's just perfect. It's just perfect. However, here, this word really conveys <clears throat> from, from the, uh, the original language, mature, a growing up. Okay? So not faultless, not blameless, not without any issues at all whatsoever in the world, but mature. And so the gifts are given, the, minute, the gifts of the ministries, ministry gifts are given to mature the saints. Why? Well, he goes on from there and says, so for the maturing of the saints, for the work of the ministry, to mature the saints so they can go do the work of the ministry. Hallelujah. For the edifying of the body of Christ. So here, we have the primary reason of ministry gifts of Apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher is to mature saints so that saints can do the work of the ministry and edify the body of, the, of Christ. See, we've put all that weight on the ministry gifts. They're supposed to go win the loss. They're supposed to do all this stuff when we got it wrong. Like one preacher used uh, years and years ago as a uh, type, shepherds don't beget sheep sheep begat sheep in other words shepherds don't reproduce sheep sheep reproduce sheep and, and biblically uh in in analogy uh the ministry gifts are the shepherding gifts they're, they're they're the gifts of guidance and leading and maturing and developing sheep is is representative of the congregation the people okay so people are to reproduce by winning the lost. Hello. So the ministry gifts, again, when we refer to that, we're, we're talking about apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers are given by God to you as a, as a believer. And every believer should be joined to a local church where there's a shepherd and that shepherd brings in or, 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 or supplements uh, that local ministry with other ministry gifts to help in the development and maturing of saints. You as a believer can fulfill your purpose. You as a believer can fulfill your destiny. And that is to do the work of the ministry
I know, I'm, just, I'm frustrated with, with this constant um, Are we back home? Are we, are we in a different session? Okay. I've got a red light. Sorry, guys, if you're listening out there, we're, we apologize. We do not know what's going on. The word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. Now notice he started out, therefore if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. The people that got the ministry of reconciliation are the new creations, the new creatures, the, new, the believers. We were given the ministry of reconciliation. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And so let's rejoice in that and be grateful and thankful that our calling individually in the body of Christ um, to, you know, not the pastor, not the evangelist, not the teacher, not the prophet, the, the ones called to the work of the ministry with the ministry of reconciliation are believers. That's, that's your calling to do the work of the ministry. What is that? Be rec to go to people and declare, be ye reconciled to God. Hallelujah. Amen. You're an ambassador for Christ. You're the bearer of his name. Amen. You're the beautiful feet. How lovely on the mountains are the feet of them that bring glad tidings of good things. Who say... Our God reigneth. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. So, um, the purpose of the ministry gifts are to, as we were talking about over in Ephesians chapter 4, to perfect, to mature the saints for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. And so we, 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 we get this major role uh, for the believer is to go into the world and preach the gospel. Now, we love the huge evangelist meetings. I mean, we love to hear about the T.L. Osborne meetings for decades overseas of 50,000 people and, you know, getting saved. And then the Reinhardt Bunky Crusades, 100,000 people plus at a time in meetings and uh, the mass evangelism. And we, we rejoice greatly in that. But even in all that, that is not the mission of you 
the, the we call it the laity, the congregant, the believer. Yours is to go into your Jerusalem, your sphere of influence, and preach the gospel. To be an ambassador for Christ, to declare, be ye reconciled to God. And you are given that ministry of reconciliation. Hallelujah. And, and, I, and I continue to apologize. I keep seeing this freezing and unfreezing and, and this kind of thing. And there's, there's nothing we can do about it on our end. Um, we, we just don't know what's happening right now. And uh, what now? The Wi-Fi. Okay. Okay. So we, we um, I, I don't want to do it right then. We probably, we may have to just like reset the whole thing, but if I do that, it's going to take 10 minutes to get it back up and we'll be, you know, so let's see if we can get through here uh, for tonight and then we will come back and uh, pick it up next week. Glory to God, which thank you, Jesus. Can you say amen? So edifying the body of Christ. Well, how's this going to happen? Well, one is a unification of believers around the doctrine of the church. Thank you, Elliot. Say it's not freezing up or hurrying. Hallelujah. Now, that's good to hear. Praise God. Um, the unifying of the saints around the doctrine of the church. Look in Mark chapter 4, verse 16 and 17. Mark 4, doctrine of church is important. And these are likewise which are sown on stony ground, who when they have heard the word immediately receive it with gladness and have no root in themselves, but so endure for a time afterward when affliction or persecution ariseth for the word's sake, immediately they are offended. It's so important that the body, remember that edifies itself, building itself up in love, um, unify around the doctrine of the church and stand strong together so that they're not offended when, per, when the perse persecution comes. And the body needs to be there. You need to be there one for another to encourage, to edify, hallelujah, to strengthen one another. Um, one of the things that I could say was possibly a drawback um, in, in uh, um, some of our circles, some of our charismatic word of faith circles, was the independence of, I can do it myself, I don't need anybody's help, I got it, I got faith, you know, um, I'm not going to talk about my problems, da 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 because that's, that's not faith, whatever, and there was no unifying together. The Bible says share your faults one with another. The Bible says if two or three agree, it's touching anything. Amen? Are you here? We did believe in asking prayer. Okay? You can't ask for prayer because asking for prayer would be a sign of lack of faith on your part. And you see, that's pride goes before destruction. So where Satan couldn't keep us out, he pushed people over. No. The threefold cord is not easily broken. Amen. Notice what we read earlier. Um, they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and in fellowship and in breaking bread and in prayers. Okay, and um, all that believed were together and had all things common. We, they, they were working together to keep each other strong. Praise the Lord. And we need that in the church. We don't need your arrogance. Well, bless God, I'm going to tell you. <laughs> I never had to do that. I was just able to pray my way through it every time. Well, Get, let's get you a box of Cracker Jacks, pal. That kind of statement pushes people away from unifying and isolates them, the people who are hurting and the people who need 
to be able to come to the body and the body be strength to them. Can you imagine? I remember, you know, if the, if the uh, I said to the foot, I have no need of thee, cut it off. Come on now. How important is the body? Remember, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, that, that two-sided work of the ministry of the, of, of the uh, church. Not the pastor, but the church, the saints, of the saints. We don't need, well, I'm going to tell you one thing, you just need more faith. I remember one time we, um, I was in a church and they wanted to have a certain well-known guest speaker come and minister. And so the secretary was given the task of contacting the ministry and finding out what process would take to be able to have this particular minister come to our church. And um, she called for two weeks before she finally got through to somebody. And um, when she got through, the, the, the person said, well, uh, I'm sorry, um, they're not able to take your call or who, whoever they needed to talk to, uh, whatever. And the secretary goes, I I've been calling for two weeks trying to get through. And the person on the end of the phone goes, well, honey, you're just going to have to use your faith. What was the basis of faith to make a phone call and get a person? Come on. What scripture am I going to stand on that I will get to talk to so-and-so according to such and such scripture and such and such? Now, I know some of you people, and I, I'm, I'm, I've been through the circle. I'm trying to make a point here. Arrogance is not faith. It's arrogance. It's actually pride. Okay? And there's, there's, a, there's a lot of things that happen under the guise of faith, which was really pride and manipulation because people were manipulated by the pride and arrogance of the other person trying to prove that they measured up to their level of faith. No. You don't have the compassion in the heart of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now, Jesus did tell people, be not faithless, but believing. Because their problem in receiving was no faith. That's, that's, that's one thing. I understand that. Okay? But it wasn't done in arrogance. The woman's daughter was possessed by a devil. It's not meat to take the children's bread, give it to the dogs. He had to locate her to get her to release her faith. And yeah, Lord, the dogs get the crumbs that fall from the master's table. Amen. Hallelujah. But over and over again, you see Jesus being moved with compassion. We have to be compassionate. And that's one thing if the Lord directs you, says uh, their problem is they don't have any faith. And, you know, um, and, they, and that has to be addressed. But don't get so cocky that every time your response is going to be, you, are, you don't have any faith. Come on. Maybe you've been in that same place before yourself. You didn't have any faith. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus told one guy, he said, all things are possible to him that believeth. He said, the guy says, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. Then that's when we come together. And we undergird and we nurture and we help edify and build up and help them grow into that place, not knock them upside the head because they don't measure up to our level. Amen. Because there could come a day you face something that's bigger than your faith, the faith level you're at. And you need someone to stand with you and edify you and join together with you and pull you up. I mean, edify means to build up, not tear down. 
Well, it looks like it's mighty quiet out there in the cyber world. Is it, is it quiet out there in the cyber world? <laughs> <coughs> Glory to God. Um, look at John chapter 8. John chapter 8. That is the gospel of John. I'm sorry. Well, we obviously it's not John first, second, or third John chapter 8 because they, they don't even have eight altogether, I don't think. Maybe they do. John 8, looking at verse 31. Then Jesus said to those which believed on him, If you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make, or the truth shall set you free. Hallelujah. Notice they stayed steadfast in the apostles' doctrine. They remain steadfast in the apostles' doctrine. Staying together, building one another up, not Scripture wars of trying to prove you know more than the next guy. I remember um, somebody had a, a unique ministry um, in, in ministering to people. It was Marilyn Hickey. And um, I remember Sister Marilyn, she knew people, and they would, uh, she would ask what was wrong with them, and they would say something. Da, da, da. She says, well, I've got a Scripture for you. And she'd give them a Scripture. That applied, I mean, just like, and she did that over and over and over again. It was just, it was so sweet. Hallelujah. But um, think about it. We, we could continue steadfastly the apostles' doctrine. When people are suffering, we, we you, know, you know, oh, you know, so and so, you know, you, that you've got relationships. I've got a scripture for you. Not, well, you know, the Bible says. See, it's all in our demeanor whether it's edifying or, or tearing down many times. We can say the same thing. You know that. People can say something to you and it be purely accurate and true, but the way it was said tore down instead of building up. If we're going to be, as believers, edifying the body of Christ, then we're going to have to do things seasoned with grace. Our words need to be seasoned with grace. Amen. Seasoned with grace. We want it to be pleasant to the ears of the hearer. Hmm. Went and got silent out there on the Facebook world again. Hallelujah. Isn't that right? So if we're going to continue, we want to continue in the doctrine and unify in that. And when one's struggling, we all rush over to build them up, to strengthen them, to help them, to give them the word. But speak the truth in love, considering thyself also. Oh, man. If you were in their shoes and you were struggling like they were struggling, how would you want somebody to come help you? Now, part of this problem became systemic because pastors or ministers got so arrogant about the word. I can look back at me and think, oh, dear Lord. You, you know, you can be a defender of the truth and you can be a um, articulate truth with passion and zeal and not have to be so mean. Kind of like that um, song by that country artist, Why You Gotta Be So Mean. <laughs> it's, you're just mean. Hello. And I thank God we, we get older. Sometimes we just get tempered and we get, <laughs> we, we grow up some. Hallelujah. But a lot, of, a lot of times that happened. People, got, people started going around. They were, they were mean with the Bible. And, and, not, and no compassion. None. Look at Acts chapter 2. 
We want and we want to be edifiers. Say, I want to be an edifier. Hallelujah. Come on out there. You can say it. I want to be an edifier. We already read this. I'm sorry. Yeah, you know, uh, can continue daily with one accord in the temple, breaking bread from house to house. Did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart, praising God, having favor with all people. The Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. Praise God. Acts chapter 11. Acts chapter 11, verse 43. Well, that's going to be hard to do. I looked at 23. How did I about to say there ain't 43 there? 23. Who, when he came and seen the grace of God, was glad and exhorted them all with the purpose of the heart that they would cleave um, unto the. Let me back up here. The tidings of these things came into the ears of, of the church which was in Jerusalem, and they sent forth Barnabas that he should go as far as Antioch. Who, when he was come and had seen the grace of God, was glad and exhorted them all that with purpose of heart they would cleave unto the Lord. For he was a good man and full of the Holy Ghost and of faith, and much people was added to the church, unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Notice when he found out how the people were ministering and how they were um, building the church up, he came and he was glad. Man, it ought to be that when. Um, others come in and see what's going on. They're glad. Amen. Because the body's building itself. Chapter 14, verse 22. Back up. And verse 21. And when they had preached the gospel to that day, to that city, they taught many. They returned to Lystra, Lystra and to Iconium and to Antioch, confirming the souls of the disciples, exhorting them to continue in the faith. And that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Notice it said they were to continue in the faith. Unify around the doctrine of the apostles. Amen. Glory to God. 1 Corinthians 11. How many out there are giving me 20 more minutes? I'm looking for, uh, I didn't even get one pop up there. Come on, somebody. Caps over here saying it's a trap. It's a trap. I'm, okay, one gave it to me. I got 20 minutes. Hallelujah. Can I get another thumbs up? Can I get two? Can I get two? Can I get two? Can I get, can I get three? Can I get four? Can I get All right. So I, that, everybody's going no more. 20 minutes, Pastor. That's all you're getting. Hallelujah. Praise God. Um, and then I got a thumbs up from Ellie. Okay, I got a, 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 a yes and a thumbs up. That's 40 minutes. Picking on y'all. <laughs> Paul writes and says here in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23, For I have received of the Lord that also which I delivered unto you. That's, that's, that's the part I'm after. Not, not, all the, not, not the communion table teaching, but what he received of the Lord, he, did, he delivered unto them. And that we are to stay unified around the teaching from the Word of God, the Word of God. Amen. Um, praise God. Amen. Galatians chapter 1, verse 6. Come on, guys. Pages get unstuck here. I got too far. I got over to the pastoral epistles and I went too far. Hallelujah. Galatians one verse six. Remember we're talking about they unified around the doctrine of the apostles. That's what Paul writes to the church of Galatia. I marvel that you so soon remove from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that would trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. Why? There's all kinds of reasons. Ultimately, Satan. He wants to pervert the gospel. He wants to distort the truth. He, why? Because it is the power of sal unto salvation. The word of the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Praise God. 
That's why the, for the church to be strong, we have to unify around, hallelujah, the doctrine of the church. Praise God. Now, not your particular denomination's doctrine, so to speak, the doctrine of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 2. Verse 20. Ephesians 2.20. Now oh, you got to go back again. Verse 19. Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens <coughs> with the saints in the household of God and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in whom all the building fitly framed together. Listen to this next word. Listen to it. Get ready. Groweth. Groweth. Unto a holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are builded together for an habitation of God through the spirit. How important it is for us that that two vain thing is for the work of the ministry ministry of reconciliation and the edifying of the body of Christ and we do that by unifying around the doctrine of the church that's edifying the body but building the body up according to what every joint supplieth amen are you here we remember we were reading from um, Ephesians 4 earlier for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Let's go on and read here. Verse 13, Ephesians 4. Till we all come in the unity of the faith. And the, now listen. We, you're not going to get everybody in the body of Christ to believe which rapture is the right rapture. Pre, mid, or post-trib. You got pre-tribulation rapturist. Mid-tribulation rapturist, post-tribulation rapturist, no tribulation rapturist, no uh, tribulation, no rapturist. Okay. Here's the thing. We're going to find out one day which one's right. And all of us will go to heaven because that, that the doctrine of the rapture of the church is not a core central doctrine of the church that will keep you in heaven or keep you out of heaven. Hello. I mean, you got some guy who's a post-trib rapturist and the Lord comes back mid-tribulation. I don't think he's going to be halfway up there saying, no, Lord, send me back. I'm a post-tribber. Hello. And if you're a pre-tribulationist and it happens post-trib, you're not going to go, Lord, I ain't going. You should have come earlier. Okay? We're talking about the unity of faith. We're talking about core central doctrine. Jesus is the Son of God. God he, who died, bore our sin, was raised from the dead by God. Amen. Seated at his own right hand. Core the unity of the faith. Hallelujah. Amen. Until we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, again, unto a perfect, not perfect, but mature man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we be henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine by the slight of men and cunning craftiness whereby they lie in wait to deceive but speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things which is the head even Christ from whom the whole body fitly joined together and compacted by that which every joint supplieth according to the effectual working in the measure of every part making increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. 
So this unifying around the doctrine of the church. Zealous for the word of God. Ministering one to the other in love to edify, to build. So we can mature and not be tossed to and fro. Why? So we can go give and, and fulfill the work of reconciliation. Hello? Well, they don't preach it just like we preach it. And so what? As long as they're preaching Jesus. Remember? You had the guys who preached for gain, who weren't even, as far as we know, maybe not even Christians. Or they cast out devil. Or no, they pre preached Christ. And, and Paul writes, says, whether they preach Christ for gain or for whatever reason, I rejoice Christ is preached. Got to do it our way, you can't do it. Hello? You got to take them down the Romans road map. Hello? Oh, no. You got to give them the four spiritual laws. Come on now. No, you got to be baptized in the name of Jesus only. Ouch. No, let's get, get to the central core things. Let's go out and minister Jesus. Let's not bring confusion out there. Let's bring reconciliation. Amen? Can you say amen? Hallelujah. Look, if you will, into... Um, let me see here. I'm trying to find a place, a place to unhook. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Well, I can't do that because that's, a, I, I want you to do this, you know, read 2 Timothy chapter 3. You need to read verses 14. What would we read? For, verse 14. But continue thou in the things thou hast learned. Here's Paul's exhortation to Timothy, which is in turn an exhortation to the church. Continue thou in the things you've learned. And you've been assured of knowing of whom you learned them. That from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith that's in Jesus Christ. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be thoroughly, may be perfect, mature again, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead, is appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all longsuffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust, they shall heat to themselves teachers, having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. It is so important, church, that we unify around the teaching of the church and be steadfast in the doctrine of the, world, of the Lord in Jesus' name. So tonight we talked about evangelism, talked about unifying. Next week we're going to get into koinonia, hallelujah fellowship, and uh, we'll cover um, how they participate in daily bread and broke bread together. And, uh, and then the following week after that, we're going to be moving into the uh, Bible in the light of our redemption. Glory to God. Hope you got something out of this tonight. <coughs> With all the interruption, I think it finally settled down the last half. And um, there were some storms running around. It could have been interfering with, with, you know, the networks and stuff, causing some, you know, some glitches. Uh, that does happen. Praise God. Um, don't forget, it's, you can give uh, electronically to Faith of Victory Church. Uh, through PayPal, Cash App. You can also send snail mail. <clears throat> Glory to God. We'd love to see you in person. Uh, we're currently meeting at uh, the uh, New Life Family Church's church. They're letting us uh, use their facility on Sunday afternoons. We are very grateful. But um, it's time to give. If you want to give your, your electronic offering to the Lord, you can go ahead and set that up in PayPal or set it up in Cash App and uh, send it in the name of Jesus. Father, we bless the people as they tithe and give in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you that heaven's windows are opened unto them and you pour out blessings that they do not have room enough to receive. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Praise God. Well, 
Until we meet again, remember these words from 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Love you. God bless you. See you next time here. Faith and Victory Church online. Hallelujah.